So today's topic is a very interesting module that Sean and other survey engineers have been developing over the past months, and we have already released. So you can already download this search uh, API, and it makes it very easy to add a generic search to your existing or to your new um, survey application. So Sean is going to talk about the background of this uh, module, and then he's going to demonstrate on how you would use and implement this uh, module. So, Sean, are you ready to start the presentation? I'm as ready as I'll ever be. Excellent. That is uh, that is really good. Let me make you the presenter. All right. There we go. Okay. Um, Jan, can you see my screen? Yes, it is clearly visible. Okay, good. Um, yeah, so this, um, just a quick background, um, I'm going to show you a module that was uh, originally conceived for a Servoy World concept car, which is one of the sessions we do at Servoy World where we sort of explore other topics um, and, and see, uh, um, kind of see what sticks. And this one stuck. Um, it was picked up uh, by a few customers and um, and they're really taking advantage of it. And then it's kind of been sitting around for a while. So um, it occurs, it occurred to us that you know this is something that is probably pretty valuable that we're not um, we're not putting in the hands of developers, uh, or it's been kind of out there and available. Uh, so we're kind of reannouncing it so that it's really um, uh, accessible and and you can take uh, advantage of it and help make improvements. Um, so it's a project, as Jan said, that's already deployed on uh, GitHub. And uh, it lives there with um, wiki documentation and an example solution, which is the one that I have open here that you can go ahead and download. Um, so basically, this way this works is uh, text-based searching for business applications. And I'm going to show you. And then we'll, uh, we'll dive into the details a bit. So here I have a sales order screen. It's based on the example data database in, um, that sort of ships by default with Servoy. And I'm looking at orders, but also you can see related information about the customer and the order items um, and even the products that are there. So um, probably about five or six tables that are joined in here in the screen, a very typical kind of um, uh, business application sort of screen. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to type in some text into my search box here and we'll look at the results. So I'm going to type in the word coffee. And quickly you can see that all the orders that uh, I click through as the results, they all have uh, coffee as one of the um, uh, one of the products that were ordered. I can type an additional word, let's say Germany, and now you see that I have all of the orders which were shipped to Germany um, in the ship country here, but also oops, they contain uh, coffee as one of the products that was ordered. I want to narrow my search down further, and let's say that I'm interested in a particular sales rep, which is another table. You can see over here now I have Andrew Fuller as one of my sales reps. Uh, so only orders which were shipped to Germany containing coffee and also um, that were uh, managed by that sales rep. Uh, it also works on string fragments, so uh, I would get the same results if I uh, removed or a few letters uh, from uh, the name. Um, so uh, you can see that it's it's matching on uh, individual uh, words or search tokens that I type. Uh, however, um, there's more. Uh, we can do operators. So. Um, Let's say, for example, that I'm interested in um, coffee again. I love coffee. And I want to find coffee which was ordered, and I'm going to use an alias here with a colon, um, after uh, 1997 New Year's. So now you can see uh, on the order date column here, that I'm showing all orders containing coffee, every single one of these is going to have coffee in it, which were ordered after 1997 uh, New Year's. I'm going to switch that to a between operator, and we'll take it to the end of the year. 
So now you can see that I have orders containing coffee and only in the year 1997, between uh, February and December here, you can see the orders there. We can take it a step further. You can see that I have a freight column here. Sometimes the freight is below $100, sometimes it's above. So let's add another search term, freight. Again, I'm going to use the alias for the column name, and I'm going to do an operator of greater than 100. So now you can see coffee shipped in, or fulfilled in 1997, and uh, freight is all above uh, 100. <clears throat> so um, there's other operators too. Um, for example, I could do coffee again. Um, Germany again, and you see that uh, I have some customers here. I'm going to do minus quick, and you can see that the quick stop customers that were there uh, dropped out of the results. So I'll put them back, and there they come back. So uh, you can do um, an exclusion operator, and you can also do an exact match. So um, I could do uh, quick. And you see I get all the orders for the quick stop customer, but if I do an exact match on quick with a plus quick, I don't get any results. If I had something that, that really matched exactly on that column, you know, or that string fragment, uh, it would show up. Um, there's, there are more operators and um, there's a couple more features, uh, but I think that's enough to sort of show you kind of what's quickly possible. Um, I'll take you through a bit of an explanation and then we can look under the hood at, um, at Servoy Developer and, and see how, how you would implement this. Um, so <clears throat> what, the, what the module does is, is really two things. Number one is it parses uh, user input and, um, and sort of converts that into um, discrete search tokens or search terms. And then the second part is it gives developers an API to map um, sort of the input search criteria against, against their data model so that uh, the module can automatically generate the queries to load data in the resulting found set or data set. <clears throat> so when you set up the, the map uh, against your data model, um, you create what we call uh, search providers. You, you, you create a search object um, initialized against a, a specific data source. In this case, it was the orders table. And then you can specify uh, which uh, data providers you want to be searchable. Um, you may have noticed that in, um, in the example I was doing, we were searching not just columns that were immediately on the orders table, like the orders date and, and such, but also um, the related table of customer and the customer name, the related table of uh, employee, the sales rep name, uh, and then even two relations away uh, to the uh, products table. And a little code snippet there shows you how easy it is to, um, to create a search provider. <clears throat> as far as parsing input goes, um, uh, it, it recognizes multiple tokens. So a token is something which is separated by white space. And you can escape tokens with quotes. So this works just like an internet search. If you, if you type in two words, it'll search for something that has to match both of them. Uh, but if you quote it, then it's taken as, as one token where the, the space is, is literally interpreted. Um, and the way it works is that all tokens must match any search provider. So what that really means is that, that whatever you type in has to, be, has to be found, but it will look across everything that you've configured in your, in your mapping. Um, it feels very intuitive, just like an internet search, where if you type in a few words, you expect to find all of those words, but maybe in, in unexpected uh, locations. Um, so another thing that is provided is, is aliasing for natural language and IETN and, and doing explicit searches. Um, you may have noticed that I typed in the word ordered, colon, and then the order date. Um, that did, that did uh, uh, first of all, it allowed me to explicitly search on, uh, on the order date. And when I do that, it, only that, um, only that search provider of order date is, is matched against the search token, which was the actual date. Um, additionally, you can use the alias not only to do an explicit search, but also to um, 
help have more natural language in in those kinds of searches. So if you were to, you know, in this case, the column name was ordered, you know, ordered date, all one word smushed together, and I just made it ordered. But of course, if I was doing a multilingual application, I could um, I could put in ITN messages instead uh, for the alias at runtime, and that way I can have multilingual searching. <clears throat> so um, search providers can be made explicit only. This is kind of a, a minor implementation detail, but by default, anything that you set up when you add a search provider, uh, it will be searched. So you might add, you know, 10 search providers and, and you type in one token and it's going to look for that token across 10 search providers. But you could say, hey, I don't want to let the user search for country unless they explicitly type it. So then you could add more search providers which are really an explicit search only and that's a simple uh, f Boolean flag that you can set on the search provider level. You saw some of the operators that were supported. Um, so greater than, greater than or equal to, less than, uh, less than or equal to, between are all supported. Um, also we showed the exclusion operator with the minus and the plus operator which is the exact match. And those work on, um, on number fields and date fields and string fields. <clears throat> there are some other features as well. Um, you can toggle case sensitivity uh, on, a, on a search provider basis. So um, by default, it's case insensitive. But if you want to make a case sensitive search, um, uh, you can, you can uh, just add that as a Boolean flag. Um, you can specify the date format. Uh, by default, it does a year, month, day. That seems to be the only date format that the world can agree on that makes sense. Uh, but of course, you might want to have your own locale date format as well, and that's easy to set. And then finally, there's something which is um, like a dynamic substitution of a uh, search token. And what I mean by that is really the user might type one thing, and then it will be it'll be substituted with something else. And the reason we have this is you might have a value list uh, which has some stored values and some, some display values. And the display value is what the user expects to match against. And the stored value is what the database uh, holds. It could be an integer and, and you're typing text. So you can set up a substitution map and at a, on a search provider by search provider basis and quickly you're able to search um, these fields which are normally displayed through value lists. Um, so let's dive into a little bit behind the code. Um, I'm going to switch over to Servoid Developer. And I lost my mouse here. There we go. Uh, so I'm looking at um, my orders list. Here was the search field. It's uh, on action event is handled by a method called on search, and uh, pretty much what we do is is um, well if there's no search text the user entered I'm I'm just loading all records in the found set, but step one is to create this search object um, through the API and this is just a top level scope in the SVY search module. Uh, you can pass in a data source as a found set or a string data source. And this works against in memory data sources as well. Um, then you then you want to set the search text. This is what the user has input. Um, then you want to set up your search providers. So in this example, I set up um, uh, these first four, which go oops, which go against the um, the orders table directly. Then you see down here I have some related data providers to um, the customer and the employee. And then you can see. Let me minimize this here to make more room. You can see uh, down here I have all the way over to the product name. Uh, so when I type in a, a search token, uh, all of these uh, search providers are searched. Um, basically, I, I set that up as a string array, but down here is where we actually call the API to add um, the search provider, uh, and we can pass in um, the name of the data provider and some additional uh, parameters if we want to. Um, Order date, we set the alias to be ordered instead of the actual column name, which is order date. And we set that this was um, an implied search uh, to false, meaning you have to explicitly type in the alias, otherwise this, uh, this search provider won't be, won't be searched. <clears throat> 
we did the same thing for freight. We don't want to search freight. Uh, you know, if you type in a string, most of the time you're not talking about a numeric field. So we set that as well to be um, an explicit search. So that's all the work that we had to do is to set up the search providers, pass in the search text, and then um, we have the search object load the records on the found set. Um, for fun, I also print out the um, the SQL that you would have had to come up with on your own after you were done parsing uh, the search terms. So um, that's pretty much it. Um, there's there's a few other topics, but you can get those from uh, the wiki documentation. The project uh, home is on uh, GitHub. Um, you can see there that uh, we're already in the second release. Um, it's worth pointing out too that there is comprehensive uh, wiki documentation, uh, both about how the um, the parsing happens. So there's some examples of things that you type and how they're parsed. A uh, list of the operators, um, API documentation is um, is completely documented and linked there. Uh, so I think it's pretty easy to get started. Also the very um, the very search solution uh, example solution that we're looking at is available if you go to the releases here um, you can see um, you can download the module as a Servoy uh, export file you can also <clears throat> download the example solution uh, or if you prefer to run from source you can do a, a checkout from github